Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie's at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury, or Dominic, whichever you prefer, and it's been a while. I put a video on YouTube explaining why it's been a while, but yeah, I've been kind of busy, so. This is a bit of a one-off. I probably won't be able to do this next week or the week after, but eh, I got a chance, and also FSC requested this match, so let's go do it. What's my on pause? Ah, there we go, okay. <laughs> I've not done this in a while. I forgot my keybinds. All right, determinism going for rover assembly. Well, FFC going for the Clokibot factory. We're in an Sony, by the way. A, you know, it's a kind of watery map. There's not a whole lot that requires the use of amphibious types of units, like amphibots, hovers. I mean, the rivers are there, but they don't block anything. They're not high enough to stop bots getting around. The outside sea can be used for sneaky tactics, but not really necessary. The vast majority of the map is land. So this does work fine. This matchup actually quite interesting. Also, starting out with a very early M from FFC. This is unusual. Not a bad idea, just kind of unusual. Good call, though, considering their opponent is going for light vehicles, but I don't think that FFC is aware of that right now. I think that just they just didn't imp just for safety's sake. No, just in case a massive rush comes in, have it there. Stun things out, then swarm them with waves. That's what you do. That's how you imp. So, good job there. At any rate, we will be seeing a bit more defensive play coming in from Determinism. FFC just going for a bit of scouting, but ultimately FFC not really focusing too much on their static defenses. We'll see what the Conjurer gets up to, but it looks like they're likely just going to go for expansions, get a bit of pressure on there, while Determinism a bit more a bit more wary. Not quite sure how they're going to approach this. I mean, they're also... I mean, their elo isn't as high. I don't know if they're as confident that they can deal with FFC. So they do seem to be playing it more carefully overall. I do like the use of the early caretaker, though. It is setting up the reclaim, getting, making sure that all this energy is actually being used so it doesn't lock out Determinism's construction options. FFC, on the other hand, not really making use of the trees for reclaim. They are fine for economy, but they aren't making use of the trees. So, puts them in a bit of an awkward spot as far as actually getting their energy income going. I do like the way Determinism is playing this. The one thing, though, is they're not going to be able to attack FFC right now. FFC is pretty secure. They've got the glaives, they got the imps, they are... They're solid. There's nothing that this entire northeast side of the map is basically untouchable. Determinism might try to go for it to scout it out. And I mean, if they throw in a dart and take out one of the imps, that's actually value. Sure, it's a dead dart, but man, if an imp goes down, that's 120 metal. That's for, what, 40 metal? Totally worth it. That's not the option that Determinism seems to be determined to take, however. They're going for the frontline approach. Bit of an interesting option there, just because... Again, that's exactly what FFC is expecting, and if you look at FFC's overall view, they... Oh, they're on a radar over here! Their radar's too far back, they can't actually see that this stuff is being built up! They have no idea Determinism is setting this up at all. They probably are guessing as much, but they don't actually know. And yeah, there comes that dart. We'll be able to take out one of the ticks, potentially. At the same time, the Scorchers on the south side of the map are going to be able to deal some damage. Getting rid of one of the radars, that will show that they are coming, but a little late to see that. However, ah, unfortunately, the imp was not taken out by the dart. FFC had better trigger discipline on that than, well, actually, that hold fire and hold position. So I suppose I should have noticed that earlier, because that does mean FFC does have to outright trigger the ticks coming off. But, eh, I mean, at this point, Determinism does have a reasonable amount of scouting going on. They do have a healthy enough economy, though FFC has been expanding over to the northeast fairly effectively. While at the same time, Determ Determinism is setting that up on their own. It's just a matter of whether or not it's going to be quick enough. And right now, FFC, they are really starting to pull ahead. Economically speaking. The one possible upside is Scorchers are reasonably tough. They should be able to deal with these Glaives without too much issue, but it is... It's a matter of whether they kite properly, and the two of them together need to be together, otherwise it's not going to work! Like, the Scorchers together can kite the Glaives, and with really good micro can manage to win this out, but I don't know, there's... I think there might be too many Glaives. The way the position now, no, the, the Scorchers have no chance. I guess a line of them coming in one at a time, sure the Scorchers could deal with it. With them coming in flat on, no, the Scorchers are dead. And I expect Determinism is going to be switching over to love, to Rippers. They do have some fencers coming in, which I can kind of see sort of as a future-proofing thing, just in case FFC does decide to build up some warriors. But right now, Determinism getting a, getting less riot-oriented mix than I would personally want. I kind of see the point of the Rippers, though, to set up essentially mobile defenders. That makes sense. The use of the Scorches, however, I guess they're still thinking, hey, maybe I can go around the back. Maybe we can go around and just harass all this crap with Scorchers, tear off everything. Maybe that'll work. 
And I'm doubtful. I would like to see a few more Rippers coming out of there because clearly Glazer, FFC's main option. But then again, Determinism doesn't necessarily know that. They might be thinking FFC is going to go for a Glaive to Warrior switch. Because it's not like, or Rocco switch. Because it's not like Warriors and Rockos are bad at dealing with vehicles. It's just that they are a bit slower. But for Scorchers, that's the only thing. Like, Scorchers would have a hard time pushing in. But the rest of the army, that would deal with Warriors and Rockos, er, Ronin. Warriors and Ronin reasonably well. But that's the only thing I can think of. Because right now, the way FFC has shown what they're planning on doing, maybe not. But then again, then again there's the Warriors. Or the Reavers, rather. There's the Reavers. There's the Ronin. That's... Okay, there you go. That's where the Fencers actually come in. And the Scorchers as well. The Scorchers can take care of the Ronin. The Fencers take care of the Reavers. There you go. So overall, I do think Determinism was on the right track. It was a little bit... I, I was doubtful at first because it seemed like FFC was going pure Glaive, but now Determinism had the right idea. And at the same time, going for this Northwest Assault, this is going to be interesting. There's only the Commander coming in to defend here. There is an Imp coming around the side because FFC most certainly sees this coming. Well, saw it coming. They had the radar. They noticed the radar dots disappearing over to the northwest, so they know, yeah, this is an attack. At the same time, the Ripper coming in here. And, actually, did they get a buff to fire rate? Well, regardless, able to take care of several Glaives and a Warrior without too much issue. While at the same time, sending a Scorch around the back to deal with some harassment. And, of course, the northwest harassment as well, though there is an Imp ready to deal with that. So, the Scorchers will likely go down. The Fencers could deal with this, but at the same time, FFC doesn't have to worry about both happening at once. Determinism did not come in here. I was kind of hoping they'd come in here simultaneous to the Southern attack and then just basically overwhelm FFC. FFC cannot send their Glaives to both places at once, at which point Determinism would theoretically be able to push through. And FFC's commander is unupgraded as well, so there'd be no way of stopping this. However, that's not what happened. At all. Oh well, bit of a shame, but that's how it goes sometimes. At any rate, Determinism should at least be able to get in here and tear apart some stuff, but this does mean there is an opening for FFC to pull their army back. Or just counterattack. But at this point, that Scorcher's gonna be hit by the Imp. There's the Imp. The Imp's not going off. What? Really? Okay, there's the Imp going off, but only able to get one Scorcher. The Fencer's unfortunately not able to come in coordinate at the same time. There is a way of doing that. I think it's you have to hit Control while holding the right-click, and then everything comes in about the same time. Otherwise, you get this coordination issue, but at the same time, FFC is still losing that south, that northwestern expansion. They are still getting pretty well torn apart there, and overall, Determinism's economy is equaling out. FFC going for a bit of a cloaky approach, going for the Iris. Not a bad idea, but the thing is, is that I don't see Determinism easily being able to be knocked down here, unless there's an air switch or something. Same with FFC. In both cases, I would not be surprised if we see an air switch. And that's, to me, where the cloaking comes in. It's not an air switch, but it's still the same idea of bypassing basic defenses in order to get in and actually do a lot more damage in the backyard. That makes sense. And at the same time, the Glaives coming in here, I mean, that's going to tear apart this force. They'll lose, like, three or four Glaives in the process, but otherwise, not much is going to be stopping them. But at least, though, Deter Determinism did take care of most of this base from FC. Like, FFC cannot deal with that. The only downside for Determinism is they only have the one Caretaker. Why do they have more? They're getting more now, but it's a little bit late. Unfortunately for them, I mean, they should... How much do they have? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Why did... Oh, crap. Sorry, I accidentally broke camera. One sec. I don't know why these are still... No, let me see what's seeing it. Oh, okay, there we go. We're back. Sorry about that. We are back. Right. Alt F1, not Control F1. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, so if you look here, Determinism is making a bit less money, using far less money, and accessing actually about the same amount, though. The excess is okay. The excess is not too bad. That's good to know. I was a little bit worried for a second there, because it seemed like the excess was going to be a problem, but it looks like, no, the excess... That's not the main issue. The main issue is right now, Determinism is not producing as much. Like, the excess... Statistically, no. The excess in terms of how much is actually stopping them from being able to build an army to stop what FFC is doing right now? Yes! Although, this counterattack coming in here for the Fencer's... The Fencer-Scorcher combo could actually do a fair amount of damage. Stopping the Glaives... I mean, there's enough Fencers, they should be able to stop the Glaives. Tearing apart the expansion again. Probably not going to kill the Commander, but still. That damage coming in there, but at the same time, Determinism cannot easily defend their main base. Got boatloads of Fencers to try to deal with, but that's about it, and... 
I'm a little concerned. With the Cloaking coming in, that means the Fencer cannot take advantage of its range because the Iris will walk every unit in right next to their, right next to the, this entire army and then start shooting. At which point the Fencers basically lose all their advantage. Like, especially since we all we will have Reavers coming in here. There's half a dozen Reavers that'll be coming in. No, this, this Fencer group is dead. The one over to the north, though, that actually could be a possible threat, forcing FFC to split their forces and saving Determinism's main base. So right now, Determinism's entire strategy is offense as defense. Just push FFC to encourage them to stand, to hang back, to not attack so much, to just be a little bit careful, and then work from there. Otherwise, no, this is this is still a tough situation for FFC to work from. And I'd like to see some Rippers, like Ripper Ravager would be a really good idea right now. Or just send a darts just to scout out, because I mean, they don't know there's forces here, so I suppose it's not really necessarily the thing to do. But it is cloaky. It doesn't come up often, but it is cloaky. It's something thing to think about. Also, M coming in here, not managing to do as much as it could. Only taking out a couple fencers in the process, meaning that this entire attack force is essentially still doing its job. Southside Horror being attacked, but not taking advantage of the cloak. The fencers able to work perfectly well. The, the Reaver's not able to get in close enough before the cloak gets off, so that actually works out perfectly for determinism. Overall, this two-prong attack determinism has going on is perfect. FFC should be able to punch through the lower, the southern force, but their main base is still under heavy fire. The reinforcements can't really go to help it out, and determinism has finally gotten their production online fully, along with the gunship switch. So determinism should be able to hold this off for as long as need be to tear apart the backside of the base. However, the fencers coming in here, not able to stop the reavers. Sorry, the reavers coming in here. The fencers are not able to stop them. So ultimately, the northern attack has been deflected, but. Determinism also saved themselves, managed to get an expansion going, and now has a bunch of air units that'll be coming in here in a base that has no air defenses. At all. The one thing for FFC, they do have all this reclaim, but Determinism is taking it! Determinism, you are reclaiming! Hooray! On top of expanding over here. Great job! I love it when people reclaim, and we will see FFC doing that as well. Like, getting that expansion going, they'll be getting the reclaim. I mean, there's loads of reclaim here, so it's not like they much to worry about this. Like, really? There we go, that's better. 1,500 metal worth of reclaim. Yeah, both players are on, on top of this. I really appreciate this. I have complained about people not reclaiming enough before, and people are reclaiming, and I am um, I am absolutely loving this. This is great. Use your economy. Actually, I just like the fact that determinism is being so ballsy. They're like going in the northwest side of the map. I mean, look at the way the map is divided. FFC, they have this corner, and they have a decently strong economy on this corner, and they have a really strong army. I mean, determinism's got to be careful how they expand, but... They're just going for it. And bear in mind, FFC is actually not aware of this. Like, this is their radar shadow. I don't think Determinism knows this, but it's working out for them. It's working out really well. The only only downside here is that Determinism, I think they might be moving too, for, too many forces out again into the north side of the map. Which means, again, the cloaked forces coming in here. If FFC doesn't fire them too soon, but they fire them off too soon, so that does reveal again to Determinism, Hey, there's another cloaked army coming in here. Watch out for that. I really kind of wish FFC would just use that Iris to move their forces super close up, especially the Reavers. Get them close up and completely nullify the range advantage the Fencers have. But they're not doing so, so Determinism gets a lot of room to play with. And on top of that, now they have 10 Harpies. That's actually pretty amazing when you think about it. So come in here. Oh, if they get that Dante, that'd be great. I think they're going to go around the back, though, but no, they could go for straight defense. Because, hey, straight defense. Yes, they will. Go for straight defense on the Dante. That's going to be perfect. Slow missiles will make sure that the Dante cannot deal enough damage to really pay off, pay for itself. Yeah, now the Dante is essentially just crippled. There's nothing it can do. Harpies will be able to tear it apart, and at the same time, this Quartz is coming in the bottom as well, just making it that much harder. I like the last minute D-gun there, but it seems like it's done more damage to FFC's own forces than to Determinism's, and now to FFC Force Retreat again. So the Harpy is saving the day. Now, FFC, there's got to be some anti air coming in here. Like, Razors, possibly, or Gremlins, maybe, or... No, I see neither of those things. Okay, well, this at this point, Determinism can easily go for a counterattack and start really pushing hard. I mean, you think about it, like, there's all the air forces coming in here. There's hardly anything set up to defend against this. There's... There's the one Thresher. Okay, I like that. But there's no Razors in the main base, so the Harpies can easily go around the back and deal with the main base. This ground force is just ripping apart FFC's entire army. I really like the Fencer spread here. It's going to be that much harder for FFC to deal with it without losing forces. Like, this is amazingly efficient from a tactical perspective. I mean, I think at this point, FFC is actually not going to be able to beat this back. 
Scythe coming in the southeast. I, good distraction play there, but force retreat as well. Or at the very least, not going to be able to do as much damage while everything else can be here. The Nimbus, ooh, against the Thresher. Not sure I like that matchup. I mean, it looks like the Nimbus... Okay, I'm not sure why it went on top of the Thresher. That's not a tactic I agree with. So good Fencer tactics, less than ideal Nimbus tactics. But hey, the Thresher is going down. Unfortunately, yeah, that lack of Thresher, though, that is a problem. And actually, the Scythe coming in here as well, also causing more problems. Less of a retreat than I thought it was. I and mean, FFC still has some decent defenses to deal with that stuff, and Harpy is still able to help. But it's getting tough, and FFC is now starting to put themselves in a position where they don't have to worry. I mean, Determinism is building up forces, but they're getting split between the gunship plant and most of the gunship plant and the, the ground factor. The ground forces are not being built quickly enough to deal with FFC's assault. So that means FFC, just by hammering on Determinism, will be able to ultimately win out. And not to mention, they are getting that reclaim. I mean, Determinism is right next to it as well. They could grab some of it, but not much. Like, the most they could safely grab is about 200 metals worth, which, worth it, but it's it's kind of tricky. And I can see why Determinism is building up the defenses, building up those defenders over to the Northwest, rather than trying to just go for the reclaim. Still, though, Harpies, Harpies and Nimbus is coming in here should stop the Thresher from dealing much damage. There's not much else in terms of anti-air defense here, so really at this point we are once again in a position where Determinism does have the upper hand. Hardly anything in the way of anti-air defense. The Harpy is coming in, slowing everything down. Unfortunately for them, not hitting that Dante. So the Dante is not really taking a whole lot of damage. And also not retreating with the Nimbuses. So those Reavers are having a field day. Gotta be careful with that. Still, though, the Nimbuses are able to get away without dealing too, without taking too much damage. Able to deal a lot of damage, mind you. And that opens some doors for the Fencers to get in here. Especially with the Vehicle Plant getting a bit more of a focus now. Actually, more of an even focus overall, it seems. Looks like it is going to be a bit more productive for Determinism to move forward with this. And on top of that, they had the Northwest pretty well taken. I mean, there is still a path here that I don't think they've accounted for where they can, where the humans can just go down here. Like, that's not Amphib only. That that allows for ground units. But, hey, it's defended. Like, the entire area is still covered by the pickets. Overall, really, Determinism just needs to hold on a little bit longer. They've got a stronger economy. They've got much stronger production. They have the Air Force. They don't have a whole lot to worry about as far as anti-air goes, surprisingly enough, I'm still not seeing any razors. Honestly, I don't know why. We're seeing gremlins. That's good, but there's not there's gnats in the way that are making that hard to actually pay off. On the other hand, though, the sheer number of reavers coming in here is causing problems. I I don't understand the the love for the fencer here. It's not working. Like Ra Ravager Ripper, I think would be the better way of going. These forces are very clumped up. Ravagers have a lot of fire, or have a lot of HP, so they can deal with the Reavers coming at them. And with the air support coming in, dealing more damage, the Ravagers just basically need to hold the line on the ground. Because that's the thing, FFC is still kind of able to push the line. They're still able to push forward and maintain a position, while Determinism can't really easily secure positions, even as they defend against FFC's approach, and even as they make all this reclaim essentially in their front yard. I mean, they got a mason right here. Send a few more of them over there to start... I mean, seriously, there's two masons right here. Send them over here. Start reclaiming. You're going to have all of the income in the world. Like, Basically, going to have an income advantage for the rest of the match. Like, 5,000 metal? That's amazing. But we aren't seeing FFC grow for them either yet. Oh, never mind. No, there it is. There's that conjure. FFC is really on point with this. Again, though, there's fencers. And again, well-placed. But again, fencers do not have a whole lot of HP. And that's becoming the main problem. It's not so much a question of can you destroy the opponents, it's whether or not you can hold the line. There isn't any frontliner to maintain that HP, to have that tank. Which is what the Ravager's for. I mean, that's you just use that to tank everything. Or Dominatrix. Harvey N in the chat pointing out Dominatrix would be a really good idea. And yes, Dominatrixing some of the Reavers would also do the trick. Well, sort of. I mean, Reavers don't have a whole lot of HP, but they do deal a lot of damage. So, hey, two for one deal at that point, because if Dominatrix kill one of the other Reavers, you're good. Yeah, if, I, if there were some Ravagers here, I could totally see Determinism taking this match. But it's just a matter of those Ravagers. It's just a matter of having a front line. Even without that, the, the, the Fencers are doing a fine job pushing back. It's just hard to... It's just whenever the army starts to regroup, whenever FFC gets their main force back in order, it's a problem again for the Fencers, and they can't easily retreat while dealing damage, whereas at least with the Ravagers, they could provide a bit of a meat shield for the Fencers in the back line. Because Fencers are artillery. And there's... Okay, there's a Ripper. Good. First step. Good job. Get You got Rippers. Maybe get more Rippers. It looks like no Ravagers are forthcoming, though. It doesn't seem like that's what Determinism wants to build. 
Like I said, I kind of disagree because the point artillery, like this point, you have Nimbus as artillery, you have defenses as, as artillery. There's loads of artillery on Determinism's side. They just don't have a front line, like a front line grunt force they can use to push and hold the line. They don't have pawns, essentially. And you kind of need those to hold the line. They got plenty of rooks and no pawns. But, that being said, they are managing to do the job, even as it is. They are managing to push back. They are managing to get rid of the, yet another Dante. And they've gotten rid of most of the reclaim coming here, which is a lot of the economy for FFC. If these, if these reclaimers go down, there's 25 metal per second. 20 metal, well, 15 now. Determinism is doing a great job getting rid of that. At the same time, they are reclaiming themselves, getting this giant field. 20 metal per second, like... Well, it's 2,000... Okay, so that's... 20 metal per second, 1,000... Yeah, it's about 15 minutes worth of 20 metal per second bonus. So yeah, Determinism is in a great spot. They just need a few more caretakers, but otherwise, they are set. I'm a bit surprised they haven't gone for a Strider Hub themselves, but quite frankly, I don't think they needed the Dante. Two Dantes have gone down to this combined force of Determinism, this combined air and vehicles force. Like Fence or Nimbus, primarily. I've, I'm criticizing the use of artillery as the primary force here, but Determinism is showing it's working, so I suppose I should lay off a little bit. At this point, though, what is FFC planning on doing? They've got Fencers, they've got Paladin? Really? In a 1v1 match? Okay. Okay, that's... What the heck was Paladin called? That was a Bertha, or Bantha, right? Yes, formerly known as the Bantha. I have never seen this in a 1v1. That... I mean, that explains why FFC is losing a lot of the force. They're going for a Hail Mary pass of a Paladin. I... I mean, it might work. It's, actually, it's not entirely true. I think I have seen Banthas in 1v1s like once or twice in the six years I've been cast or five years I've been casting this game. So maybe, maybe it is 20 minutes in. And hey, there are some people in, in some videos I'd cast recently in the comments that were saying, "Hey, do you have any games with Striders in them?" It's like, here you go, here you go. Here's the Strider. Like, it's not a detriment, but it's really darn close. Actually, Harvey, I'm pointing in the chat something I didn't really... I kind of pointed out, but didn't really get in great detail on. Determinism has been attacking from multiple fronts. I mentioned that earlier. I didn't do it simultaneously, but they did do it. So they kept keeping FFC on their toes. But that's with vehicles. FFC is going for the Cloaky, and Cloaky, you'd expect to be doing a lot more work getting around the back and just messing with their opponents and making so their opponents don't really know what to do. And FFC did do some scythe work earlier, but really not all that much. Especially with the Iris, the amount of work you can do with an Iris with Iris Reaver. Just walking around anywhere you want, finding the weak points, and just destroying them. But as I mentioned before, FFC hasn't put this stuff under the iris on a hold fire, so they keep giving their own position away. I mean, some of them have actually just gone in, like, as we see right now, the Reavers have managed to get into range. But still, the fact that they haven't held fire under the iris has meant that it's been very difficult for FFC to actually maintain this sneaky force. Because it's clear that they want to go for a sneaky force. They went for, they've invested heavily in irises. And those aren't cheap. That's 600 metal each. That's three war That's three reavers right there. That's like half a dozen Ronin. They're not cheap. But they're investing in them, and yet at the same time, it hasn't really been used as an infiltration tactic. Or as a way of dealing with a range advantage of fencers. To a little extent, yes, we just saw it right now, but for the most part, no. For the most part, the Ronin under the cloak bubble have given it away. So the reavers haven't really been able to benefit from that, because they've been hit, and when you get hit, you lose cloak. As a result, it becomes impossible to actually make use of the Iris for real subterfuge and real infiltration tactics. Which is a bit of a shame, because it means that there's really not much value to that 600 metal. Actually, about 2400 metal at this point. Now, that being said, FFC is doing a fine job. That, that Paladin is working out reasonably well, and at the same time, there's a lot of forces being built from the Cloaky Factory. But, FFC also lost their Reclaim Force. They lost a bunch of Front Yard Economy. They have a couple of conjurers in the front lines that will be able to reclaim, but at the same time, Determinism has been reclaiming all this stuff. And like I said, they're going to have a good... That's still another good 10 minutes of this metal per second. 100 metal per second for at least the next 10 minutes off reclaim alone. So Determinism is in a great spot. And the Dominatrix is coming in. We didn't see this for the Reavers, but we are going to see it for the Paladin, because hey, why not? If you can capture the Paladin, that is game. FFC is going to throw in the towel right there and then. So this overall... It's just working out really well for Determinism, and they're defending on that southern front as FFC tries to attack it, trying to attack the multiple fronts, and Determinism is already on that. I mean, what is the radar coverage for Determinism right now? They've got... actually kind of limited. They only have... oh, sorry, that's FFC. What's Determinism's radar coverage like? 
Oh, what the heck? Come on, game. Okay, there we go. Actually, yeah, this is really good. Like, this is the radar coverage for determinism. They know exactly what FFC is up to basically everywhere on the map. So, I'm not surprised to see that. I'm not surprised to see because this radar tower right here, advanced radar. Hey, it's working. You don't see advanced radar very often, but it's paying off right now because, like I said, determinism really can't be surprised. And we're seeing that play out. We're seeing all these different approaches that FFC tries to take, and determinism is already on that. Ooh, there's a stun on the Paladin. I mean, if they get the stun on the entire support force as well, that's the domination he's coming in. Going for the knights, however. Not a bad option either. Get a few knights, stun that, or turn that around. But hey, if you stun at the Paladin, the very least, that slows down the armor. While at the same time, all the Nimbus is coming around the side. Getting an eastern flank. No western flank to answer that, but hey, that at least d distracts FFC. Pulling all their anti-air over to deal with the Nimbus over here, which means they can't easily deal with the Nats. Although the Nats have been gradually dealt with, but in the meantime... FFC has lost the position advantage. And the Dominatrix have found some purchase. I mean, overall, this is still working out really well. Okay, some purchase, not much. This is still working out really well for determinism. And on top of that, they have twice the economy. Actually, to be, to be fair, FFC is doing a really good job defending themselves considering that economic advantage difference. It's been, what, like three minutes? Four minutes? FFC has been... I look at their attrition. Fifteen... or No, ten thousand metal worth of attrition advantage on their opponents. Mind you, a lot of that is the Paladin doing a great job holding its own. But with the Pencils coming in here, that should... No, actually, I don't know. That's not necessarily going to end anytime soon. The range is still pretty immensely big. So, yeah, not likely. Now, this Paladin, I, I really like the Dominatrix use. I don't see any more Dommies coming in here, sadly. Which would have been cool to grab the Paladin with. But, eh, still, if he can stun the Paladin, that's something. And if they, even if they can't, that's still distracts the knights, which allows for the fencers to come in and deal their damage, and just generally opens the door. So, I mean, look at the amount of support force that's no longer here. The knights are being reinforced at a reasonably fast pace, but they still have to walk in. Now, if they don't have that, then they can't really do much. But again, that paladin is still doing a good job, and I think FSC might... might have a chance. I mean, they've taken care of all this frontline... frontline reclaim. They've taken back the reclaim fields. That is huge. And if you look at all the Condras here, that could easily just reclaim everything here as well. And FFC is going to do that. This is what? Why is it saying 105? Come on, you. Yeah, 5,000 metal worth of reclaim with 8 Conjurers. That's plus 40 easily. That's plus 40 for, again, a good 15 minutes. Like, it's... That's... that's, that's the, or no, sorry, not 15 minutes. Plus 40 for a good 2 minutes. Should get a little bit... Not too not ahead of myself there, but still. Plus 40 for 2 minutes, that would help get them back in position. Considering that Determinism has kind of lost their frontline position, again, I really wish they'd gone for more Ravagers. But I don't really see that happening. But that's what I mean by Ravagers. They just have the frontline force, and at the same time, there's no, no real force coming around the back here. The Nimbus is going here. People in the chat mentioning if, if Determinism went for the Caretakers, they'd win. And that's a fair point. FFC would not be able to take advantage of the economy they've just now started taking. This plus 50 metal per second that I was talking about earlier. But even then, I think it might be a little too late for that. I really think it's too late for that. The, the Paladins inside of FFC, uh, sorry, inside of Determinism's Plateau, there's not a whole lot they can build, and even if they break the Caretakers, there are still two dozen Knights on the field. So dealing with them is it's just kind of too late now. If that had happened about five minutes ago, yes, then totally that'd be game. But at this point, I just don't see it. I mean, FFC is facing heavy resistance at the very end, the home stretch. And hypothetically, this isn't even the home stretch, because Determinism still is a much stronger economy, and they still have plenty of room they could expand or build backup bases in. But, yeah, I don't know. It does feel like this is kind of it. FFC might still be able to win with that Paladin. At the same time, there is the, that exact suicide run that we were talking about earlier. Going into the Caretakers might be able to take them out, but it's too little too late as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's a nice sentiment, but it really should have happened way earlier. That had happened... I don't know, like I said, five minutes ago, then we wouldn't be seeing this attack here. There wouldn't have been enough Zeus's to come in here to break everything apart. So yeah, to me, I think the big thing, yeah, Determinism should have gone in here earlier, helped deal with getting rid of the production and all that. That would have been nice. But to me, the main thing was Determinism just did not have a frontline force that could deal with getting pushed back. Defensers don't have the HP to deal with this stuff. 
Frenzer with Ravagers screening them, I think would have done a much better job. You would have had the, the firepower of the Fencers, you would have had the HP of the Ravagers, you would have possibly had a free Rippers in there as well, just to make things a bit easier. And it wouldn't have led to this constant back and forth where determinism could never really hold ground in the center of the map. At this point, the determinism, while they do have a massive metal advantage, just don't have any way of producing, and that gives FFC the game. But yeah, determinism, they had 10k metal use advantage, not even produced, used. Excess, yeah, they excess quite a bit, but they used way more. Their army value was, however, consistently lower, because they just never really kept their army in position, whereas FFC, they kept retreating, they kept keeping their armor relatively safe, they kept building it up, and they kept destroying what Determinism had to build up. So Determinism's higher economy did not help when FFC was just keeping themselves reasonably safe and keeping themselves out of fights they couldn't win. And definitely making sure that when they had forces, they had forces that worked in a, either in a more even way, although Cloakie is hard to have a frontline tank type thing, Reavers, Reavers and Knights are the best you can get, but they still had cloaking. They still had the irises, which I, I was criticizing because they weren't working as well as they could have. But hey, that still meant that half the force was invisible. So sure, they'd have the fencers, fencers firing in the general direction, but they weren't rippers. They didn't have splash damage. Or they weren't anything that dealt spray fire. So they couldn't have easily revealed all the force. They revealed some of them if the fencer missiles got blocked. But they didn't reveal all of them. So, I guess it still kind of worked. But yeah, I could see Determinism totally winning if they went for a more mixed force. That would have likely done it. But maybe they were trying to see what would happen with just Fencer, or primary Fencer. Not trying to go for Ravagers, because, you know, Ravagers are good. Ravagers are really good. And I can see why someone might want to not use Ravagers. I don't know if that was the motivation, but I could see why you might not want to. Because, quite frankly, it gets a bit boring. It does kind of feel like you get in and... I don't know. It's hard to... Hard to really say. But basically, yeah. I can see why. Just because you're getting in there with... With a typical standard rover force. And everyone's going to think, Oh, you know, you don't want to go for the standard rover force. So, fair enough. I Maybe that's what they're thinking of. But, I don't know. I still think... I still think Ravagers would have done the trick. No, and Harvey and pointing out in chat, they could have had like one a one to four ratio of Ravagers to everything else, and then once they get about a dozen, just go for backyard assault with the Ravagers. And yeah, that would have worked really well. That would have been amazing. All right. Well, it looks like, man, there aren't a lot of where are games. The change in the way that the game names were constructed... I'm sorry, I didn't really prep in advance much other than this request. This is a real change in the way that the games have been listed. It's like... Ranks are based off of... Oh! Oh, I can set up ranks. Okay, cool. I did not realize that. That's cool. Hey, I can get higher rank players and such. Neat. All right, let's try this. Going to be a match on Ravage between Atostic and King Lunchbox. Actually, is New Shunsar better? Can I get... I don't know how this works. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, what's... Cool. Actually, this is really cool. Okay, cool. So the, the replay search became way better. I did not realize this. This is amazing. All right, so... And yeah, next up is going to be Atostic versus King Lunchbox on Ravaged. Yay! Love that map. All right, so we'll be back in a sec with that. <laughs> 